Victoria, um, uh, I'm sorry I cannot be with you, but uh, uh, I, I, I have too much, too much long travel. So Eric asked me if uh, I was willing to uh, give a, a lecture, and um, I had a discussion with uh, Roman, and we agreed that it could be interesting to uh, use a slightly different format where he actually asks some questions and uh, I try to to respond and uh, the theme will be uh, something on national innovation systems I guess that is not a very big surprise to you who uh, know what I normally write about Okay, so thanks for this opportunity that you gave me to interview you here. And I think it's quite unusual to have a lecture done like that. But let's see what we can make out of it. So my first question would be on the origins of the concept of innovation systems. So uh, as far as I know, Freeman uses it in an unpublished OECD working paper already in 1983 and you use it in a booklet in 1985 so how comes that you introduce the concept? I think uh, uh, in the case of Chris Freeman it has been uh, uh, you can say it has been let latent it has been uh, in his work for quite a long time he, he refers uh, uh, sometimes to the military industrial uh, innovation system in, uh, uh, in some earlier work. And uh, in my case, uh, we had uh, uh, worked a lot on uh, what we call national production system. And uh, it was uh, with uh, inspiration from uh, uh, French, Marxist structuralist economist, and and uh, we also uh, talked about how uh, uh, these uh, production systems uh, uh, related to innovation. We talked actually about innovative capabilities of national production systems. So in a sense, uh, uh, it was it was already there. I think in my own case. Uh, it was a way to uh, emphasize uh, what I saw as uh, perhaps one of the most important uh, insights produced in innovation research, uh, not only my own, but also what had been done by uh, people in England at SPRU and, and by uh, uh, Nathan Rosenberg in his historical work. Uh, the most important insight, as I saw it, was that innovation is an interactive process. Okay, so now you've said a bit about the inspiration, where it came from, but uh, was there also an intention from the very beginning? I think we, we, uh, the, the context where this paper by, by Chris Freeman uh, uh, for OECD uh, uh, was produced was a, a special uh, uh, working group uh, where I was a member and uh, that the theme of this group was uh, science, technology and competitiveness. And uh, what we uh, uh, wanted was in a sense to understand what you might call structural uh, competitiveness. And this stands in contrast to some other ideas that, that uh, competitiveness has something to do with uh, low wage costs uh, and, and low costs in general, uh, which you can call the kind of more short-term competitiveness. So, so uh, you can say that, that introducing this concept, national innovation system, was a way to point to other processes and uh, uh, uh,
components in the national economy uh, which determine uh, competitiveness in in the in the long run so you are someone who always insisted that there are two different interpretation of the national innovation system so a broad one as yourself and uh, Chris Freeman would have put it and then also a more narrow one uh, coming more from the US uh, by Maury and Nelson so uh, is there an advantage of using one or the other? No, I think it it's uh, it has it's it gives a meaning that uh, U.S. scholars uh, uh, give more emphasis to to uh, the part of the system where uh, R and D uh, relates to uh, uh, innovation in firms, where science, technology institutions relate to. Uh, the industry and the industrial sector, etc., uh, uh, because uh, you have in 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 the U.S. Uh, you have a te technological lead, and uh, in order to promote radical innovation, um, uh, uh, science and technology plays, of course, a major role. When it comes to uh, uh, small countries uh, like Denmark, where I come from, and Sweden and Norway, etc. Uh, we find that uh, m a lot of the strength in competitiveness is in uh, low and medium tech areas where science technology does not play such a major role. And therefore, we are more aware about other factors. Uh, which uh, contribute to, to uh, innovation, like organizational learning, like the skills of the workers, and things like that. So, so uh, I would say the fact that, that uh, you have different uh, interpretations will to some degree uh, 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 reflect that you have real differences in the mode of innovation, in how innovation takes place in the U.S. versus uh, uh, in small countries, and of course in 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 uh, low and middle income countries as well. Yeah, you just said organizational learning and skills, uh, and they are quite key in this broader definition. But when it comes to measuring them, isn't it not true that? It's very hard, and there aren't barely any indicators for these kind of dimensions. No, I, I think this is a major problem, uh, uh, and and uh, this is one reason why uh, a lot of policymakers, even in uh, less developed countries, uh, they focus a lot on on uh, science-based learning uh, because you have some indicators, even if they might be not extremely uh, correct, etc. You have indicators, and and there is a, a, a strong connection between uh, what you tend to treat as important in political terms and what is measurable. And it's also, of course, a problem for people who want to do research because uh, uh, if you cannot measure things, uh, you you. You have to stick to other methods like case studies, etc. And uh, uh, the answer is, of course, that uh, uh, we should put a big emphasis on developing uh, a wider set of indicators that the ones we have access to now, which is typically R&D statistics, patenting, and, and uh, perhaps innovation surveys uh, which still are mainly focused on uh, science technology based innovation uh, we need to make efforts to develop uh, new indicators so if i understand you correct so you say we shouldn't i mean quantitative research is fine and qualitative research case studies are fine but we should 
something a little bit outside these two yeah. dimensions and uh, no I, I i the ideal i mean the best research projects i've been involved in has typically combined quite sophisticated uh, statistical econometric exercises with uh, uh, surveys and with case studies and and uh, uh, i think uh, the problem is of course for the for the individual scholar it's not you cannot do everything at the same time and especially if you're a phd student you have to do uh, one of those things normally but ideally for instance when people do surveys i always recommend them to combine it with with trying to to visit some of the firms they send the survey to and actually try the survey questions out and try to find out what what lies behind the answers what is reality behind uh, because it's always a little dangerous to go direct to numbers if you have no feeling about the reality behind but i i i, I do think of course we need to uh, quantify and make quantitative analysis whenever it's possible, and we need to work to extend what's possible by developing new indicators and, and, and uh, try to move from qualitative towards quantitative studies. That sounds like a very hard task for the people that do research yeah. today. No, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I was just saying this is too ambitious for the individual and especially for PhD students. So it means that I think the ideal framework for doing research in this area, if you're really interested in national innovation systems, is to have quite big teams, teams which are interdisciplinary, where you have more standard uh, uh, or, or you have more economic analysis, you have statistical analysis, you have more socioeconomic uh, possibility to do case studies, you have chance to develop surveys, etc. So uh, the best project I think I ever was involved in, I think we were about 15 people. And at the end, I think there were about uh, six PhDs who, who finalized their thesis uh, within a couple of years after uh, the project. So, so it's, it's of course not always possible, but, but in this field I think this kind of scale and it's also a very good training for PhD students to be part of this kind of, of uh, big projects. They learn a lot in practice of using different techniques and tools and methods. Let's go a little bit further uh, and I mean one thing that I've noticed that are, is for, that several scholars such as for instance Charles Atquist have argued that the national innovation system is not a theory and that the fact that different scholars use it in different ways is highly problematic. Mm -hmm. So what would you say? No, I, I think uh, uh, Charles and me, we have had many long discussions. We, we wrote a paper together on, on uh, the Swedish and the Danish innovation system. And I remember I had, we had to share a whole bottle of red wine before we could reach uh, uh, some kind of compromise. He's, he's very stubborn and he says, I'm very stubborn too. So uh, this is one of the points where, where uh, we tend to, to uh, disagree because number one, I think in a sense, uh, when Charles is saying this, I think he, he has an exaggerated uh, uh, idea of how much real theory there is in social science. I think in, in uh, what, what is normally presented that theory is something I, I, I rather refer to as focusing device. And focusing device is like glasses. It makes you see something you would not see without using them. 
Uh, and in this, in this way, I think national systems of innovation is, is a kind of theoretical concept in the sense that it's a focusing device. It means that uh, it makes you see that innovation takes place uh, in, in a process uh, uh, which is cumulative, uncertain, and which involves uh, interaction between uh, different organizations and individuals. Uh, it, makes, it makes important distinction between uh, k kind of uh, more uh, incremental and cumulative processes and more radical change processes. And it makes distinction between uh, processes of uh, uh, exploration, processes of search, and processes of, of learning. All these concepts are, so to say, the infrastructure or what lies behind the concept of national innovation system. And they are, as I see it, uh, they, 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 they constitute a theoretical uh, framework uh, for understanding what's going on in a national economy. So you wouldn't say claim it's a theory as such? Uh, this is a, a tricky question. I mean, well, uh, sometimes when I, when I get this question, I ask the other person, what is a theory? And many in social science. I mean, perhaps I should ask you, Roman, what do you think? Could you give a good example of a theory? Well, I think it's yeah. difficult in the, to say, as you say, in social science, it's not the same as in natural science. And sometimes we try, you know, to pretend we're physics or yeah. we're chemistry yeah. Yeah. and come up with these things and come up with hypotheses and test them. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well. No, I think, I think <laughs> it's not so easy. So. So before I answer the question, I need to know what you mean by a theory. And, and most people don't have... There was one person who said uh, the heckscher olin uh, foreign trade, that uh, you have this kind of... And this theory has basically been fo falsified by uh, 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 Leonchev paradox. I mean, the, the, the idea that uh, uh, countries will... Uh, specialize in the areas where they have uh, strong force, strong force. But, but I, I, okay, I mean, for me it's not, I'm not sure that it's, it's, the question is so important. I think the important is that the underlying concepts are theoretical and they help you understand what's going on and you can produce hypotheses on basis of these concepts and you can test them. So I think it's not. It's 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 it has a se theoretical backing. So as time passed by, different types of innovation systems have been proposed on different levels. You know, we have technological, regional, mm. sectoral system mm. concepts. So, do you see those as competing or as complementary to the national innovation system? I think the three are, are they relate differently to national innovation systems. I would say that regional systems is, uh, when it comes to the theoretical uh, background or, or the basic concepts used, it's very similar and, and, and we're quite a lot inspired by national innovation systems. They had, of course, many of these ideas uh, uh, in, in, in some form even before national innovation systems came, but they took quite a lot of inspiration as well. And then they developed a lot of new good ideas which I think can uh, enrich the, the national innovation system approach. So I think they, those two are quite close. Huh? And then uh, if I take sectoral system, uh, which is uh, Malerba and, and uh, 
uh, people like that, uh, they bring uh, to the analysis a slightly more economic approach. They, they look at uh, 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 basic uh, uh, ideas of appropriability and uh, kind of technological opportunity as something which is different between different sectors. And they use uh, some ideas from Schumpeter, uh, you know, uh, uh, different uh, types of sectors where some you have a lot of small firms innovating and others they are really big ones, etc. Uh, so I think in a sense, uh, I would say perhaps they are not quite as systemic. I mean, they, they are building further on, I would call it, industrial organization and industrial uh, dynamics. And they add to that the kind of interaction uh, linking uh, firms uh, to other institutions. So, so I, I, I would say here it's a kind of add-on uh, uh, from uh, an original different approach. Uh, when it comes to technological uh, system, I, I have uh, read quite recently, uh, quite thoroughly, uh, some of their stuff. And, and I, 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 I think it's, it's, uh, uh, it's quite different from uh, the kind of pioneer work uh, which we did on national innovation systems in the sense that this early work was how does learning and innovation take place as rooted in the existing production system. And uh, uh, very important was the interaction between users and producers which are already there. So in a sense you can say a lot of the focus was on incremental innovation as taking place within an existing uh, uh, system as it is. While technology innovation system, from the very beginning, they were mainly interested in the emergence of new technologies. And, and this is, uh, 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 in a sense, after having thought a lot about it, I think there is a very interesting complementarity. Because, of course, the national system uh, will, to some degree, uh, build upon the existing structures and uh, produce innovation on this basis. And on the other hand, it's also obvious that from time to time, you have technological breakthroughs in, in terms of, of uh, uh, my information technology, of course, uh, biotechnology, artificial intelligence, new areas coming coming up, and if if uh, uh, and and of course the policy implications are somewhat uh, uh, and the policy audience is is somewhat different. While I would argue from from this existing system that it's very important to focus on education, training, organizational learning, upgrading the skills of ordinary workers, etc. Uh, for them to foster a new technological system uh, uh, requires that uh, you, 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 you start up uh, new things. And of course here scientists play a major role uh, 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 programs which are technology specific play a major role. Um, and uh, uh, also the fact that it's completely new technology, uh, the creation of a new market becomes a major problem. In, 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 the, in the work on national innovation system, as I did it, uh, the market, I assume that, that the market is, is in a sense uh, created on the basis of the existing markets, on the existing users. Uh, and uh, uh, in the case of creating completely new technologies or absorbing 
completely new technologies. This might be more uh, uh, a challenge for for policy. So, so after thinking about it, I I, I think there is uh, an interesting uh, complementarity. One thing common for for all these three is, of course, that they are not focused necessarily on the national uh, level, but uh, uh, you can say that both the empirical work on sectoral system and the empirical work on technological system uh, does introduce very often uh, a, a national uh, dimension. And uh, I, I would say they are also complementary in the sense that if you, for instance, want to understand differences between national systems, I think it's a great idea, for instance, to compare the same sector in, in uh, two, day or two or three or more uh, national systems. And the same is, is, of course, true if you want to see how uh, uh, a new technology is uh, uh, emerging. In, uh, it's, it's very interesting to see how they emerge differently in different national systems. And actually, so in that sense also I would say uh, they are complementary also in the sense that uh, they contribute to the understanding of, of uh, national systems. Nice. <laughs> That's quite an interesting discussion, I think, because uh, in my own work on mm. technological systems, I thought many times, like, you know, can you actually bring it back? Can you mm. relate bo it back to, mm. you know, e evolutionary roots, mm. which have been there in the technological mm. tradition quite mm. much? So, yeah, that's, that's fascinating. Mm. Mm. Um, so, the concept that you developed uh, comes from research in high-income countries mm -hmm. and uh, often in, for example, uh, research submitted to the Globalist Conference, mm -hmm. we see uh, this concept, but also technological system, sectoral mm -hmm. system approaches uh, being taken and uh, mm -hmm. used in uh, low- and middle-income country mm -hmm. contexts. What do you think about that? No, I, I think you, you need to be careful when you uh, transplant uh, ideas from one context. As I mentioned before, I mean the, the, the issues are slightly different in the United States and than they are in Denmark or, or Sweden. And the same is even more the case, of course, if you, if you move to uh, a country like a uh, middle-income country like uh, uh, Cuba or China or or if you move to a, a, a low-income country in, in, in some of the countries in, in, in Africa. Uh, and, and uh, I mean, it's, uh, uh, I mean, the first is, of course, that uh, you cannot really assume that the system is, is really there and established. Uh, uh, and it, it's both the components and, and the, and the uh, linkages and relationships uh, between the components. None of them might not be uh, uh, very well uh, developed. And in some cases, uh, you might even uh, be misled by the fact that uh, governments in low-income countries, they establish uh, institutions with precisely the same name and, and function as uh, uh, the ones you have in, in, in the high-income countries. But, but uh, they, they might mainly be uh, uh, superficial names on institutions which do not really work. So, so uh, I mean, I think there's still a lot of work to be done on developing these concepts so that they become uh, really uh, useful, uh, uh, especially for, for low-income countries. Uh, for instance, uh, when, when perhaps uh, 
more than 50% of the population or the working population actually work in the informal sector. Uh, uh, we we just focusing on on the formal sector in itself is is problematic. And what is the relationship between processes of learning, mm. processes of innovation taking place in the informal sector, and in 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 interaction sometimes with with the formal sector? There's a little lot of work to be done here, and I know Erika with uh, hosting the Prestoria uh, 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 Academy is one of the pioneers really trying to to work more on that and I, I really hope she will will do a, a great job. So what you say is if I understand you correctly it's uh, on the one hand you have to be very careful mm. when taking the concepts mm. and just uh, replacing them and mm. thinking okay it will Let's do in the run the analysis. Uh, on the other hand, mm -hmm. is actually putting effort into developing new indicators, mm -hmm. new approaching, mm -hmm. new maybe even types of mm -hmm. innovation, bringing them on a map that weren't there mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. No, I, I I completely agree on that, and I I would like to add that there are certain uh, very basic uh, uh, ideas which I. Th still think are quite useful uh, for, for, for all kinds of systems. Huh? And, and, and these concepts have to do with uh, competence building, with, with learning, with interactive learning, uh, with, with the, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, with kind of, of uh, capacity building. Etc. I think these concepts, uh, which are uh, in a sense uh, built into the innovation system thinking, is is uh, uh, still uh, uh, quite uh, quite useful. Uh, but but when you when you go to the more, so to say, complete concepts like. Uh, 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 national innovation system, etc. I had one one thought uh, uh, when we prepared this interview that that actually perhaps some ideas from technological innovation systems might be uh, paradoxically uh, uh, relevant. Paradoxically, because normally technology innovation system is very high tech very much focused on science-based, uh, very complex technologies. But on the other hand, they have this idea that you have to build something from scratch. So if you, if you combine a more uh, a realistic idea about the knowledge base, it is uh, 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 much more based on uh, uh, experience. Uh, with with some of the ideas that you 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 need to create uh, new things, including new markets, uh, uh, not only supply of knowledge but also demand for knowledge, etc. There might be some possibility to combine uh, the ideas of national learning systems and uh, uh, technology innovation systems. That sounds like a fascinating research project <laughs> for the future. <laughs> so maybe we yeah. should pick up on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so another dimension I would like to go into would be uh, internationalization, globalization, mm -hmm. which is uh, going on. So the economy is more and more integrated. Knowledge flows are more and more transnational. And we see today that, uh, on, well, Hardly any technology is developed only in one mm. country. So how does that fit with the national innovation system concept and uh, how meaningful is it to analyze the national, uh, on the national level mm. in times of globalization? No, of course, uh, uh, globalization is a major uh, uh, phenomenon. And, and of course, we need to think and rethink uh, national innovation systems in, in this uh, light. 
But uh, first, I would say it's not it, the fact that technology is developed in one country and is mainly used in another country. It's not a new phenomenon. Uh, I think we can can see that uh, uh, several hundred years back. Uh, what is new is, of course, the kind of uh, uh, scale of the communication, both uh, when it comes to uh, scientific work, when it comes to uh, transfer uh, or, or move technologies from one place to another, and with, when it comes to the exchange of, of information. Uh, here it's important to realize that the broad definition, as I talked about it before, is much more rooted in the national, uh, at the national level, than the narrow definition would indicate. If you take the narrow definition, you can say that a lot of the interaction between laboratories, uh, universities, uh, multinational firms, R&D, doing R&D in different parts of the world, etc. Uh, they, they really imply that, that uh, uh, a lot of what's taking pl place in the narrowly defined system uh, 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 becomes uh, transnational. When it comes to the broader, it has a lot to do with human resources. The broader one has to do with how people interact, uh, uh, at the workplace, how organizations interact in, in daily, etc., and it has to do with how people work and learn. And here uh, we find uh, recent research by uh, uh, Edward Lawrence and myself and others, we find uh, dramatic differences in how people work and learn even in Europe. Uh, in spite of uh, these attempts for economic integration. And we also find that these differences are reflected in quite different ways of innovating. So in order to have independent innovation at the level of the firm, uh, you normally need to have a highly developed uh, uh, learning culture uh, and a uh, high degree of learning organizations in, in, in your national firms. So here I would say national education system, national labor markets, uh, they shape people and uh, uh, the way you organize work is important and here national, cap uh, 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 national characteristics remain uh, important. So in that, that is uh, the other. The other issue is, of course, that I would argue that as globalization takes place, it becomes increasingly important to get some evolution, evolutionary understanding of the role of the nation states. We see, we see today. Uh, uh, as uh, uh, economic processes become more and more global, uh, we still have this kind of... Uh, the dominant form of governance is still national, and this constitutes one of the major contradictions in, in, in the world economy now. And in this context, to understand both the historical and the uh, role of national innovation system and the kind of transformation taking place now becomes, as I see it, quite, quite important. So, uh, going a little bit further to the applicability of the concept when we are now talking mm. about it, you know, from the different angles, uh, in general, how would you see the policy relevance of the concept of national innovation systems? Mm. No, I, I think uh, uh, there are certain lessons which uh, should be drawn uh, from uh, 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 this, this concept. And, and uh, uh, one of them is, of course, that uh, uh, 
it's not sufficient to trust the kind of linear model where you invest in science and you expect to uh, have uh, technology and innovation coming out of that. You, you need to, to think about uh, the feedback of users. You need to take into account uh, 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 the capacity of users to absorb technology. And this might be more important, actually, than promoting uh, the supply of new uh, technology. That's one lesson. Uh, 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 another lesson, if you take the broad definition, you would think innovation policy as including uh, much more than science technology policy. You would think about uh, technologies which shape how people uh, work and learn, which implies education policy, labor market policy, etc. So uh, I think. Uh, that, that uh, uh, in, in general, I think that, that uh, uh, we, we are in a period of globalization where there are several uh, uh, processes which tend to undermine innovation. And uh, therefore, I think to, to put innovation policy on the agenda also for international organizations like UN, etc., is extremely important. Uh, let me just mention a few of those uh, uh, factors which tend to undermine innovation. Uh, one of them is financialization. Uh, when you get more and more focus on uh, financial speculation, you take away attention from the real economy and you take away attention from, from innovation as such. Uh, when you uh, uh, get this kind of austerity policy, which you see in many countries, uh, one, one, some of the sectors which suffer from this have to do with investment in knowledge, like uh, 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 research, higher education, uh, but also uh, in general, education and training. Um, there are several of these factors, so I think also uh, uh, in innovation system uh, uh, should be seen, as I see it, as kind of alternative to more traditional macroeconomic perspectives on the national economy. And if, we, if this would happen, I think we would get uh, a kind of, of uh, more future-oriented and more uh, realistic. And, and of course, this includes also the major societal challenges we have, the growing inequality, the, the, the problems with the uh, uh, environment, with the energy, etc. Uh, I think we, we uh, uh, innovation needs to be a uh, very important element in a strategy towards uh, sustainable uh, and gre green development. And, and uh, I share the view of uh, Mariana Matsukato, who would like to give governments a kind of major entrepreneurial role in developing uh, uh, broad programs to give new direction to technology. And, and uh, there are enormous uh, potential in terms of producing a world which is less unequal, uh, uh, more green, uh, 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 and, and so on, uh, which are actually not uh, exploited because you have very dogmatic ideas about uh, uh, the economy and, and you are unwilling to uh, uh, impose necessary control on financial capital at, at uh, the global level. So but one question here would be for me, like, it, it, you know, would the implications be the same for high-income countries as for middle and low-income countries? 
No, I, I think, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, in, in high-income countries, uh, uh, some high-income countries are uh, 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 at the, has, has a certain technological lead. And uh, uh, some big ones like the U.S., they will, of course, uh, uh, push uh, uh, to develop uh, new technologies uh, which are uh, science-based in order to keep uh, a lead uh, in, in, uh, in the world. Uh, technologies are, of course, also very important for for uh, uh, military uh, reasons and so on. Uh, some big developing countries will actually engage uh, in similar areas. I think we will see China and increasingly perhaps also China to uh, move into some of those, uh, 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 so to say, most important strategic uh, 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 future technologies. Uh, in in uh, small and middle sized uh, small and and uh, middle sized uh, countries, uh, it will be uh, high income. Will will uh, for them to absorb to develop the capacity to absorb these new technologies uh, will be extremely important. And here, uh, uh, I think the kind of broad understanding of the innovation uh, system uh, is important. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, the, 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 the low-income countries, uh, there is a very interesting discussion now about if it's possible to upgrade the economy through joining so-called global value chains. And uh, uh, I think so far, what I've seen so far, and, and including some very recent research I've done together with Jan Fogelberg, uh, it gives the impression that uh, success by joining global value chain is conditional. It's something you uh, uh, can have if you have invest investment at the same time in building national capabilities and if you have inside the firms a willingness to, to uh, invest in, 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 higher, in education and, and uh, so on. So, so I think there are, uh, when it comes to middle income countries, I think the work by Coin Lee uh, is extremely interesting. He has uh, proposed that uh, Korea uh, and, and uh, Taiwan uh, and countries like that have been able to actually move from middle income towards high income by specializing in specific technologies which are in a very rapid uh, change, uh, which he, he refers to it as, as short uh, technology life cycles. And, and uh, so, so, of course, uh, you're right that, that the policy implications uh, must look uh, 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 quite different, and and uh, you can see in general that uh, there is uh, an idea, and, and now I come a little back to this idea, what is a theoretical concept. Uh, there is uh, a, a certain idea that the real theory should be general. Uh, if the, the more general it is, the more you can apply it everywhere and under all circumstances, the more the better or the more it is a theory. And, and here we have a problem with a concept such as national innovation systems because they have slightly different meaning. They have slightly different form and, and, and the challenges they imply 
are different at different levels of, of income and development. And therefore, uh, uh, you can say both the con when you make conceptualization, uh, I think it's fair to define or focus on, on different aspects of the system if you look at Kenya or if you look at at uh, Greece or if you look at the United States. So, uh, and, and this of course goes then also for uh, the definition of policy. So, one final question to uh, round up this rather extensive interview. Um, so, many young scholars study your books and articles on the national innovation system and uh, some of them use your concepts in their thesis work in their articles so uh, do you have any advice to the participants uh, in the global x academy on how to use the concept no i i i i think uh, first i would say uh, If, if a PhD student comes and asks me, should I, should I write my thesis on the national innovation system of Kenya? I would say, no, don't do that, please. Uh, if, if there was a group of senior scholars in Kenya who organized a big project on Kenya's national innovation system, I would be uh, uh, I would I would be ha very happy to see a PhD student uh, studying some specific dimension or some subsystem or some component. It could be, for instance, the role of universities in uh, Kenya's uh, national innovation system. Uh, so I, I would say this is my my first first. Advice. Second, I think uh, the other systemic concepts, uh, uh, as I said, they are complementary, and, and uh, I think uh, uh, studying regional systems could be uh, interesting. Uh, wh what is imp implicit, more or less, in, in the national innovation system is the idea of doing comparison. I mean, it's very difficult to say something about a specific system without comparing it with another system. I mean, if you say it's strong or weak or, or, or uh, much of that or much of or little of that, in order to say that, you need to have a chance to compare. So I think comparative work is, is, is quite, quite interesting. And, and uh, if you are a PhD student, uh, you, 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 would, you would need to uh, compare rather small things, not too complex things. You need to, uh, uh, you could compare uh, uh, universities uh, uh, in, in, uh, in two or three countries, and then you could make uh, perhaps three, three case studies or something like that. I don't know. It's difficult in itself, but I think the idea of comparative work is, is uh, normally uh, quite useful. So, finally, I would say that, as I indicated before, uh, uh, normally you either do, uh, you either, either do quantitative work on primary statistics or using uh, uh, some data you collect by surveys, or you do, uh, uh, or you do uh, case studies and qualitative work. And I think that uh, it's necessary for a PhD student to uh, 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 to you to to have one of these alternative as as the dominant one, but. I think if you, if you do a survey, I would always recommend, as I said earlier, to, to make some concrete visits to the places that you survey. If you 
uh, if you uh, make uh, uh, case studies, I would normally recommend that you put try to put the phenomenon that you study in detail in a case uh, in, a, in a kind of quantitative context. I mean, just giving some numbers. How important is this relative case uh, and how it is uh, uh, situated? So, uh, even uh, ideally, as I said, I, I like to see very big projects where you uh, uh, study the same phenomenon by different uh, methods. You cannot do that. Uh, but I think to, to, to have one major uh, approach and combine it with, with some minor, minor things. Otherwise, uh, 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 it's, it's basically a question of hard work and having fun. <laughs> right.